Okay guys, here's part two of using the custom events and uh, we're going to just continue where we left off at and we we're here in the myform 2.h and what we're going to do here is actually double click into the button I think I already created the event and yes I did, it's actually here already defined let me go into this method into in the CPP file which happens to be right there and what we're going to do here is actually invoke the event but first off we want to read the value actually listed within that text box so what we're going to do here is since the text box is a string type we're going to actually convert it into an int I'm just going to pass in the actual text as parameter to convert we're going to get the event data args and we're going to instantiate into a new um, a new event and we're going to pass in as a parameter what was in the text box and here we're going to actually invoke the event pass back info first parameter is an object we're going to pass it an instance of this class and we're going to pass in event data args as what we want for my form one to receive. So now what we want to do is actually go into uh, my form one. We want to actually view the code, and let's actually go to the CPP file. What we need to do is actually create. Oh. Look at here, I actually forgot to, uh, I'm sorry, that's the CPP file, so that's fine. In the myform.h file, we're going to actually want to create two more, one more variable and one more method. And first off, let me make sure I include myform2.h, because we're going to be referencing or having a member variable of myform here. It's going to be a private member variable my form 2 and what we're also going to do over here is create an event handler that's going to be handling the uh, custom event that we're going to be catching um, through my form 2 Sure, I actually have that in the CPP file as well. Okay, so now that I have that, let me actually go into the handle event here and actually start filling in the data uh, and actually before I even get to that one thing I have to do is I declared an instance of the my um class but I actually didn't initialize it so let me go ahead and do that first let me make it visible And here's where we're going to tie it to the event that's going to be passed. We set it to a new event handler. And here we're going to actually have two parameters uh, for this. That is going to be the instance of this class and a reference to the method that's going to be handling this custom event and that's the one that we just created right now handle event so just do that and that part is finished so every single time I click on the button in the my form 2.cpp um, that button's already tied to an action event but we're going to create we created a custom event that within there is going to be caught by this form 
through this uh, event handler pass back info. I should say the event pass back info. And it references uh, that this method here, handle event, is going to be handling that uh, function call or that custom event handling. So here's the uh, handle event. And just for readability, let me just kind of space this out a little bit more. And what we can actually do here. We can actually check who the sender is. So we can say if sender equals, and then we can actually test to see if it's actually uh, this, this the the my form two because we can actually have multiple forms. We can have my form three up through my th my form twenty, and we can implement these custom events all through all of all throughout those ones, and it can be caught through here. And if my form two uh, throws the event. Then we can check to see here if it's actually my form two that uh, that caused it. So and we can do the same thing for all the other my forms. So let me just go here real quick and make sure I have that. I'm sorry. What am I doing? If sender equals this my form two, then perform the following function codes, and we can do an else if have sender equals my form 3, my, my form 4, all the way through any amount of forms you actually want to create in your application. So within here we're actually going to assign the variable that was passed in through the event arg, the custom event args, and we're going to do it th this way. We're going to get the event args passed into this event handler, and we're going to overload it, or cast it I should say, to our custom event data args class and we're going to call the get data and what we're going to do now is actually set the text box in this class to show the data pass from the other class That's then yes. So um, I think we're pretty much good here. Now, if I'm not missing anything at all, I should be able to run it right now and uh, enter in a value in my form two. Click the button and have it seen in my form one. Okay, so here's my form two, and if you remember, my form two is instantiated by my form one. Let's put uh, 95. Pass back now. You see it in the other class. Pass 0, 80, and as you can see, everything that is actually um, entered into this form is actually caught by this other one, too. Or I should say, is displayed there. So if we actually do a quick. Um, breakpoint and kind of step through everything you can kind of see the flow of control over here so I'm going to do a breakpoint here at the actual uh, main application where I run the the my form my form class so we're going to do a step into it as you see here in the constructor um, I initialize the, the actual my form GUI components at the same time I instantiate my form 2 set it to visible and at the same time, I uh, tie that event um, that is called, or I should say, that is part of the my form two class, and I tie it to a particular event event handle or handle event that's going to be handling um, that custom event that is triggered from pushing the button in my form two. So we're going to go here, and actually, before I kind of even get there, I'm sorry, guys, I'm going to jump around again. Let me go here to. Uh, my form 2.cpp and I'm going to put a breakpoint here within this um, button click event. So let's go back here. I'm going to kind of step through it. And then there's that. It should pop up the screens or it should pop up the GUIs. There's my form 2. And what I'm going to do here is uh, type in a variable. Pass back now. Okay, you can see here that I'm 
passing that variable, that data, that information into a local variable here, num. And then here I'm actually be creating a new instance of this custom event data args. And as you can see, I'm using the constructor that takes in an int as a parameter. So once we step into that, we'll see that the member variable data is uh, set to whatever variable we actually sent in. So 75 in this case. So now data equals 75. And here we're about to post the event. And to make sure we actually catch it and see it here, I'm going to post another breakpoint here. Okay, so let's uh, step into if sender equals my form 2, which it does, extract, um, call the accessor function get data. So if we step into it again, and that get data, all it does is return the data, which is 75. I set it to the local variable, and then I set it to the actual uh, text box field that I have over there, of course, converting it to a string. So I say continue. Pull up on my form 1 here, and you see it again. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much that, guys. I hope it was uh, informational. I know it helped me a lot kind of uh, seeing all of this work done through many different websites and kind of consolidating it here for everyone else to see. But um, this is one way to actually go to actually pass data from a called class to the calling class. So just using these custom event methods and um, yeah, you should be able to do whatever. You, be, you can pass whatever kind of data you want to within the custom event. Um, classes that you guys define so in mines I have the um, what is it custom event info uh, file where I define a class event data args you can pass classes through here you can pass lists arrays I just simply uh, return a primitive int var uh, variable but you can do much more complicated stuff and you can send much more complicated data from one class to the calling class and it's not a problem so uh, if you have any questions guys please let me know if if not, then uh, thanks guys for watching and stay tuned for the next tutorial that I do. So thanks guys.